The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you, Husky. <laughs> Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston had once lived in the town of Ogilvy. The small cabin which he had built with his own hands was still standing when he returned after a long absence. With a few days at his disposal, he made repairs to the cabin, chinking some of the logs in the side and pointing up stones in the fireplace. He renewed old friendships and acquaintances. At noon of Sergeant Preston's second day in Ogilvy, he had two visitors for dinner. One was Ace Martin, owner of the cafe. The other was Sam Blake, a prospector. After the meal, the three men talked and relaxed before the fire. Is it really true, Sam, that you've finally struck it rich? Oh, yeah. I got a gold claim that's really going to pay off. Well, if you're right, Sam, I'll benefit as much as you. <laughs> Ace, I always said you'd never regret carrying me on credit. I'll pay back every cent I owe you plus a bonus. All right, Sam, but I won't spend the cash till I see it. Where is your claim? I'm not saying where it is. Now you're being smart. When are you going to start working it, Sam? I figured on starting out this afternoon or tomorrow morning at the latest. But I... But what? I changed my plans. Well, why'd you change your plans, Sam? I won't tell. You won't tell? No, I don't like to be laughed at. And you'd laugh if I said why I'm not setting out right away. Ah. So I'm not telling. We wouldn't laugh at you, Sam. Ace Martin would. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Tell us. I promise I won't laugh. Well, uh, it's because Muckluck told me we were in for heavy snow. Well, Muckluck? <laughs> Muckluck told him. I knew you'd laugh. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, Sam. Who's Muckluck? That's my dog. Oh. Oh, old sourdoughs are alike. You spend so much time pushing around the country with no one but a dog for company, you get to thinking you can savvy dog talk. <laughs> All right, you can laugh if you're a mind to. But I'm telling you, Ace Martin, me and Muckluck understand each other. He knows what I say, and he's got ways of making me savvy what he wants to All say. All right, Sam. All right. I won't argue with you. I think you're right, Sam. You do? King and I understand each other. What? Hey, now, do you mean that, Preston? Indeed, I do. Well, every man has a right to his own opinion. As for me, I don't like dogs. Oh, maybe they're handy to pull a sled, but aside from that, I don't want any part of them. Ace, have you ever owned a dog? No, sir, and I don't want it. I have troubles enough with Duke Slade. Duke Slade? Oh, uh, your partner in the cafe? Yeah. What's the matter with him? Oh, I reckon he's all right, but he gets quiet spells. He gets sulky and mean. I don't know what it is, but he's got something on his mind. Muckluck never gets mean. That's why I'd sooner have a dog for a friend than a man like Duke. Well, now, speaking of dogs, Sergeant Preston, where is King? Somewhere outside. <laughs> you should have seen him when we first arrived. Yeah, how's that? Betcha I know how he acted. He was just bubbling over with high spirits, glad to get back home. I bet right now he's out there racing through the snow and having a gay time. <laughs> yes, sirree. <laughs> Sam was right. King raced through clean snow, charging into unbroken drifts and enjoying his freedom to explore familiar places. He had found one of his friends, a doe antelope. The graceful creature had often run with King, and now the two enjoyed their game of tag. They raced from hill to hill, from drift to drift, their tracks crisscrossing many times. First one took the lead and then the other. Presently, the antelope was far ahead, leaping along the edge of a woods. And then, a heavy gun sounded in the woods nearby. King saw the antelope falter and then stumble and roll over. She lay motionless as King reached her side. King saw a red stain expanding on the snow. 
He nuzzled his fallen friend gently. And then he knew the antelope was dead. King was angry at such wanton slaughter, and he turned toward the black trees from which death had struck so suddenly and waited. It wasn't long before he saw the man approaching. Get away from there, King. That's my kill. Duke Slade walked out of the woods. King knew Duke Slade and hated him. I don't want trouble with you, so fair moves. King's angry snarls brought Duke Slade to a halt a few yards distant. Get away from there. Get away, you vicious cur. You belong to anyone but Sergeant Preston, I'd shoot you. Instinctively, King wanted to attack the man who had killed his friend, the antelope. His restraint came from Sergeant Preston's careful training. Head lowered, he stood tense and watching, ready to attack in self-defense if Duke Slade raised his rifle. And then he heard a clear voice in the distance. It was Sergeant Preston's voice. It was a command to the big dog. Go on, Mutt. Your master's calling. King hesitated momentarily. He wanted to stay with his dead friend, but the Mountie's commands took precedence over any personal desire. There was an edge of impatience in that call. King turned reluctantly, looked back with hatred at Duke Slade, and then pointed his nose toward Preston's cabin and trotted home. Well, fellow, where'd you been? Saw you running with that antelope, one of your old friends, eh? Now, what's the matter, boy? When we arrived, you were glad to be home. You found but your not... dog yet, Sergeant Preston? Yes, Sam, we'll be right in. Come on, King. Inside, boy. Hi there, King. Glad to see you. Well, you don't seem overjoyed at meeting you, Sam. <laughs> What's the matter, King? King eyed Sam Blake, glanced at Ace Martin, and then lay down on the floor and cushioned his nose on his front paws. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Ace? Uh, looks to me like King and my partner have something in common. <laughs> How's that? Well, I told you how Duke Slade got quiet spells. Yes. Look, look at your dog there, Preston. <laughs> Acts like he wants to be left alone. <laughs> Something happened while King was out in the snow. I'd like to know what it was. Yeah. Now, if he were like Sam's dog, Muckluck, he'd speak right up and tell us all about it. He may at that when he's ready. Ha-ha, <laughs> you men and your dog. King, what's the matter with you? Look at him. He's eyeing the door. Someone's coming. Seems to be someone he doesn't like. King, quiet boy. Oh, hi there, Sergeant Preston. Duke Slade, come in. Oh, sure, thanks. Quiet, King. Oh, hi, Sam. Howdy. Anything wrong with the cafe, Slade? Well, uh, uh, no, no. I guess there's nothing really wrong. Is Baldy on the job? Yeah, yeah. I left him in charge while I came here to see you. I'm not feeling too good. I figured to go home and take a nap until this evening. Baldy can handle things until then. Oh, sure thing, Duke. Go ahead. I hope you get to feeling better. Oh, I'll be all right after a nap. Oh, there, there's one thing more. Well? Something happened to the lock on a strong box. Someone busted? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Seems like it's jammed, that's all. I couldn't lock it. We'll have to get it fixed. Meanwhile, I didn't want to leave too much cash around the cafe with only Baldy on the job. Well, we had a lot of cash on hand to trade for gold dust when the prospectors and miners come in for the weekend. What'd you do with it? Oh, I left enough for Baldy to make change and brought the rest along with me. I was that all right with you? Oh, sure thing. Well, I thought it'd be. Oh, Sam, <laughs> what's this I hear about you striking it rich? Yeah, I got a claim. Uh, they, uh, they tell me you're leaving here this afternoon to start working it. Maybe so, maybe not. <laughs> he, he won't go unless his dog changes his mind about the weather, will you, Sam? <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> well, I'll shove along. Glad you're in town, Sergeant Preston. Good to see you again. It's good to be here. Now, be careful with that cash, Duke. Oh, I'll be careful. But we needn't worry, Ace. No one will have the nerve to steal it while the Mounties in town. See you in the morning. Right. Bye. Bye, Duke. Bye. King, what's the matter with you? He don't like Duke Slade. I wonder why. Well, now, if that was Sam's dog, Muckluck... He just up and tell you why he don't like my partner, wouldn't he, Sam? <laughs> oh. Sergeant Preston, what do you think about the weather? Well, we may get some snow, Sam, but I doubt there'll be enough to interfere with travel. I'd sure like to start for my claim, especially after what Duke Slade said. What was that, Sam? He said he heard I'd struck it rich. 
That means people are talking about my good luck. Talk like that spreads quickly. That's the point, Sergeant. It spreads like wildfire. The longer I'm around town, the more there'll be to hear I found gold. Sooner or later, some ornery claim jumper will hear it and try to figure ways to make me tell where my claim's at. Frankly, Sam, I think you're right. You figure I should get going as soon as possible? I would, if I were you. I'll tell Mucklock what you said. Oh. I reckon maybe he'll be willing to travel even if the weather is a mite doubtful. I'll go home and ready my gear so I can set out tonight. Glad to have seen you, Sergeant, and I sure enjoyed the grub. Glad you did. Good luck, Sam. Thanks. Yeah, I'll get along too, Sergeant Preston. Oh. So long, Sergeant. Bye. Bye, Sergeant. Well, King, now we can get back to work on that shelf we were making. <laughs> I wish I knew what's ailing you, fella. You look as if you'd lost a friend. (laughs) There was little sleep for King that night. The big dog stirred restlessly, changing his position frequently. His mind was filled with recurring thoughts of the death of his friend, the antelope. Several times he rose and approached the door, and then looked at the sleeping form of Sergeant Preston, as if debating whether or not to rouse his master and take him to the scene of the shooting. Snow fell during the night, big, heavy flakes that continued for two hours. But dawn came bright and clear, with a new carpet of white across the open spaces on both sides of the frozen river. Sergeant Preston slept later than usual that morning. It was after sunrise when King nuzzled him awake. What? What? Oh. That's trouble, King. Mm, slept overtime, huh? Well, that's one of the privileges a man enjoys on a day off. Hey there, quit it. Stop tugging. I'll get up, fella. Sergeant Preston! Sergeant Preston! Oh, I'd say smartin. You must have known he was coming, eh, King? Hey, Sergeant, are you there? Come on in. Sergeant Preston. Oh, you're excited. What's the trouble? Trouble plenty, Sergeant Preston. And it means the end of your vacation. What happened? My partner's been murdered. Slade? Yeah. It must have been done with a knife, judging from the looks of this place. You saw it? Yeah, and you'd better come right away. Hey, will you, as soon as I put on my boots and park it. You remember yesterday when he was here? Yes. He was going home to take a nap. Yeah, I said he felt sick. That's right. Well, he didn't show up at the cafe last night. Huh? So this morning I went to his house. You waited until this morning? Yeah, I worried about him last night, but we were busy, mighty busy. I couldn't get away. I went to his house this morning after I finished work. Oh, his place is a wreck. As if there'd been a struggle? Yeah, furniture wrecked, dishes smashed, a couple of lamps busted. Looked like there'd been an awful fight. Blood all over the place. Anyone live near enough to hear a struggle? No, Duke lived apart from all the other houses. Well, I'm ready. Let's go to Duke's place. (laughs) Yes, King, you come too. Come along, boy. (laughs) Where had Duke been stabbed? I don't know. The body's gone. So's the cash. The body's gone? Yeah, but I know where that is. The snow tells a story. It was dragged down to the river. It was put through a hole that had been chopped in the ice. And what's more, Sergeant, I know who killed Duke Slade. Who? Sam Blake. Oh, I doubt that. Sam Blake's no killer. He's the only one who knew that Duke had a lot of cash with him. You knew it. Yeah, but I'd have no need to steal my own money. I knew Duke had cash. Oh, Baldy no. at the cafe knew it. Baldy was with me all night. Sam's the only one who could have killed Duke. Besides that, Sam skipped town. I checked on that. You knew he was leaving last night? He said so. He went to his claim. Well, maybe he did and maybe he didn't. I have my doubts. We'll not form an opinion about the murder until we've made an investigation. Well, you can do that pronto. There's Duke's cabin. Now, do you see that deep groove in the new snow? Huh? It runs in a beeline from the cabin to the river. I followed it myself. After last night's snow, there won't be many tracks for the I know that. The groove is partly filled in with new snow. And I'd bet every dime that I have that my partner's body made that groove and Blake dragged it to the river. Wait a minute. Was that cabin door open when you came here? Sure it was. Just you see it. And what's more, the money that Duke had for my cash box is gone. I looked around for it when I was here. Oh? Uh-huh. Let's go inside. Look at this place. Mighty violent struggle, eh, King? <laughs> Poor Duke. He must have got the first blow from the knife while he was lying in bed. Then he got up, he tried to fight, and he fought hard, getting weaker all the time. I can just see it. I didn't notice any tracks around here, except yours. Well, I made the tracks you saw just a little while ago. Tracks that were made last night were covered by the snowfall. And that includes the tracks that Blake made when he came here, as well as the tracks from his house when he pulled out of these parts. We'll see what Sam has to say. How can you? You don't know where he went. He said he was going to his claim. Yeah, but we don't know where it is. I know. You You do? He told me confidentially where it was located. Oh. 
Well, then I'll, uh, I'll go with you. Let's get started. All right, but first we'll examine the hole in the ice. Come on, King. <laughs> the river ice was thick. No one could have fallen through it accidentally. Moreover, there were marks to show that the three-foot hole had been cut through the ice with an axe. Now, you see, Sergeant Preston, the deep grove in the snow comes right up to the edge of the hole. Hmm. I see it does. The body was dragged through the snow and then shoved through the ice. The killer didn't want it found. I wonder why. You wonder why? Why, because a man can't be judged guilty of first-degree murder unless a corpse is found. That's the law. That's all right. (laughs) King, what's the matter with you, boy? Why are you so uneasy? It looks like he wants to get on the trail of the killer. Yes. Look at him. Chuck it on your parka. You want to go in that direction, King? King knew much more about the killing than did Sergeant Preston. He did his level best to tell the Maori that the answer to the mystery would be found on the far side of the river, but without success. The sergeant seemed unduly stubborn. No, King, we're not crossing the river, boy. We're going the other way. Which way is Blake's gold claim? East. The dog wants to go west. No, King. Quiet, fellow. No, if it wasn't for the new snow, there'd be easy tracks to follow. There'll be tracks. There... You say there will be? Tracks Blake made after the snow stopped falling. Come on, Ace. We'll pick up equipment and food at my cabin and start looking for those tracks. Yeah, right. Come along, King. I just standing there looking at you. Come, King. Yeah, now he's coming. And he's none too well pleased with the order. King obeyed, but not eagerly. He traveled at the Mounties' side with frequent backward glances toward the hole in the ice. He had information for his master, but he was unable to tell what he knew. When Sergeant Preston reached the cabin, the great dog waited silently outside while his master and ace entered and closed the door. You need any help, Sergeant Preston? No, just sit down for a couple of minutes. Doesn't take me long to pack a knapsack. I'm used to traveling light. I sure hope we can catch Blake. Sure we'll be able to overtake him. He'll not travel fast. Well, maybe not. On the other hand, maybe he'll move as if his life's at stake, which might be the case. He might be planning to get to the border before the truth comes out. The truth? What do you mean by that? About the murder. You think he'd run and leave a gold claim? Well, in his case, I'd figure it'd be better to lose a gold claim than to stay around and have my neck stretched on a hangman's rope. After all, a man can get another gold claim. But he's got only one life. Ace, you're jumping to conclusions. I'll bet all I own that he's on his way to the border with the cash that he stole from Duke. Your reasoning's not good, Ace. Instead of the facts, Sam found gold. Why should he steal from Duke? He says he found gold. I've no reason to doubt his word. Have you seen the gold? Have I seen it? Has anyone seen it? The answer is no. Maybe he lied. He told me where his claim was located, Ace. For some time, I thought there might be gold in that vicinity. Ah, you're prejudiced in Sam's favor. All I can think about is poor Duke. Murdered. All set, Ace. Let's go. All right. Yes, King, we're moving. Which way did you say we go? Due east from the river. Come along, King. King tagged along stolidly at his master's side, while the Mountie and Ace moved at a fast pace. The air was crisp and clear. There was a fair breeze that swept the ice clear of snow over most of the route. After two hours of travel, the two men saw a small cooking fire on the lee side of a large snowbank. Sam was crouched beside the fire, preparing food. His pleasure when he greeted his friends seemed genuine. Sakes alive, look at who's here. I'm glad to see you, Sergeant. Hello, Sam. You too, Ace. Yeah? You're just in time for breakfast. Get dishes from your pack and I'll pass out the grub. Likewise, some tea if you got cups to hold it. We're not hungry. Huh? Well, sakes alive, Ace. What's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. You look downright mad about something. Did you come here by chance? No, we didn't come here by Wait chance. Wait a minute, Ace. Huh? Hey, what's ailing you, Ace? You were... Sam, we came to ask you about Duke Slade. What about him? You know what about him. There's no use trying to lie out of it. Back up, Ace. Let the sergeant do the talking. Sam, when was the last time you saw Duke Slade? We, uh... Well, yesterday, when he stopped at your cabin, remember? He was taking the money home from the cafe. You haven't seen him since? No. Why are you asking about it? Someone went to his cabin last night, knifed him, put his body through the ice, and made off of the cash. No. You don't say. You and I are the only ones who knew he had that cash at home. Now, see here, Ace, don't you accuse me of killing your brother. Well, Ace, are you sure Baldy had no chance to commit this crime? Dead sure. He wasn't out of my sight all night long. 
And besides, he's not strong enough to drag a heavy man through the snow. Well, I didn't do it. Well, it strikes me as mighty odd you got no further from home than this. What time did you start out? During the night. I got caught on the trail by the snowfall, and for a time I had mighty slow going. Muckluck told me it'd snow. Should have heeded what he uh, said. Muckluck, a dumb dog. He's not dumb, not by a jugful. By thunder, he knows more than you do, Ace. He knows better than to accuse me of a crime. If he was looking for the killer, he wouldn't come traipsing after me. He'd pick up the scent and go get the right man. Sergeant Preston, you got a dog that's as smart as Muckluck. Fact is, anyone but me might say King is even smarter. Why in tarnation don't you put King on the trail? But, Sam, the trail's covered by snow. Covered by snow. Ah, a little snow wouldn't stop a dog like Mucklock or King either. <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Of course I'm right. King tried to take us across the river. He tried to take us west. You wouldn't go? After what Ace told me, I thought we'd better talk to you. Ace, we might have done better if we'd followed King. How could King or any other dog follow a scent when he don't know who he's looking for? Who says he don't know who he's looking for? Ace, we're going back. Back where? To the hole in the ice. For what? We're going to do what we should have done a few hours ago. We're going to let King take the lead. What about Sam Blake? You're going to let him go? For the present. But he'll get away. I doubt if Sam had anything to do with the scene in Duke's cabin. Come on, Ace, we're going back. <laughs> Look at King. He knows you're ready and to start back. Come on, King. Take the lead, fella. <laughs> King knew exactly where he was going. On the return trip to the river, he ran ahead, halted, then turned and waited while the Mountie and Ace Martin caught up. And then, with a bark of assurance, he ran on again. It was well past noon when the hole in the ice was reached for the second time that day. Now, King, it's up to you. Where do you want to go? King pointed his nose westward toward the opposite bank and then paused and looked back at his master. All right, King. A word was all the great dog needed. <laughs> King resumed his journey as fast as the two men could follow. <laughs> the first hour of travel was across unmarked snow that had filled in the footprints of the man King trailed. The dog followed that trail by a barely perceptible scent that would have escaped nearly every other dog. And then Sergeant Preston made a discovery. Look there, Ace. See those marks in the snow? Yeah, I... I can just about see him, and that's all. Just a little depression. But footprints, nevertheless. You mean that that dog has really found a man's tracks? Yes, I do. The snowstorm was nearly over when the men were trailing reached this point. The tracks are only partly filled in. Huh. They'll be clearer in a few minutes. Well, Sergeant, maybe we're really getting someplace. I think we are. But I still don't understand how that dog knew that a man came this way. You've been underestimating dogs. <laughs> Keep going, King. Where will you, boy? After another 30 minutes of travel, the tracks of a man were sharply defined. King followed the track through a valley and over a small hill, and then into a canyon. He followed the canyon for half an hour, and then rounded a turn and halted abruptly. Less than a hundred yards ahead, he saw a shack, and smoke came from the chimney. He barked a signal. I see it, King. Hey, Sergeant, look at the tracks. They go straight to the door of that shack. Do you suppose... Look at that dog travel. He's streaking towards that cabin as if he'd been shot from a gun. Come on, Martin. As he raced toward the cabin, King knew that a killer was inside. He saw the oil paper window torn aside, and then the enemy's face, wide-eyed with surprise. The sight of that face added fuel to the big dog's anger. The face dropped out of sight, then reappeared behind a revolver. Duke Slade, the man whom Preston and Ace Martin thought dead, saw King charging. King! And beyond the dog, the two men who had found the hideout. Duke knew he had to kill. He fired two shots at King. <laughs> Both shots went wild. Duke rested his gun on the window ledge and aimed more carefully at the oncoming dog. He fired again. The bullet brushed King's bristling fur, but the great dog didn't even break his stride. And then Sergeant Preston fired from the distance. The Mountie's bullet struck the cabin inches from Duke's face. Duke leaped back out of view. And then King left the ground in a mighty leap that took him through the window. Duke tried to turn to bring his gun to bear on King. But the infuriated dog was too quick. He leaped and grabbed Duke's wrist in his powerful jaws. The gun exploded harmlessly toward the ceiling. King knew Duke Slade as the killer of his friend, the antelope. For a moment, he forgot his master and his training. He was bent on just one thing punishment for the slayer. Duke dropped his gun and tried to struggle. He had the strength of desperation, but he was no match for King. 
And then Sergeant Preston and Ace Martin came through the door. Hey, come on. Oh, call him off. Take him off. Get him away. Help me. Help me, I tell you. What? It's Duke's leg. Come, King. That's enough. Down, boy. Uh, 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 that, that dog, he, he would have killed me. Steady, King. Uh, on guard, boy. Blade, what are you doing? Uh, well, I thought that... But it looked like you were dead. Now, no, wait. Hey. Where's the money from the cafe? I, I got it. It's here. Here, huh? What's the story, Slade? Want to talk now or later? I, I... You meant to steal that cash, huh? Try to make me think you've been killed and put through the ice. What about that, Slade? Who was killed and put through the ice? Uh, no one. Honest, there was no one killed. I, I shot an antelope. That's all. I, I used the antelope to, to make it look like there'd been a murder in my place. And dragged the carcass to the river and put it through the ice? Yeah. Now, you can't hold me for murder. There's no one dead. Oh, maybe not, but by thunder, you tried to get away with uh, my cash. Figured there'd be no search for you, didn't you, you dirty double cross? I, I, I made a mistake, Ace. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking of. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. Oh, you're right about that, Duke. You'll never get a chance to steal from me again. You're going to jail. You, you wouldn't send me to jail, Ace. You wouldn't do that, would you? We've been friends a long time. Yeah, that's right. We have been friends a long time. When I trust a man, I trust him all the way. I trusted you and I trusted Sam Blake, but you turned on me. Not only that, you framed things so as it looked like someone murdered you. I suspected Sam Blake. Hey, say, wait, listen. Give me another chance. I'm I... an all-out man, Duke. I trust a friend all the way. But when he turns on me, I go all out to see that he gets punished. Hold out your hands, Duke. Handcuffs. The usual thing when we take a prisoner into custody. Sergeant, I... I'd like to take back some of the things I said about dogs. That king dog sure is smart. I reckon I never will, Savvy, how he knew that Duke Slade was the man we wanted. Sam will be glad to know you've changed your opinion. Well, Sam's dog may be smart, but <laughs> he's no match for King. <laughs> well, King, you were right the first time, boy. We'd have saved a lot of time if I'd listened to you instead of trailing Sam Blake. In any event, fella, this case is closed. <laughs> In our next adventure, a man hurries along a corridor of a small hotel in Whitehorse to a room at the far end. A hard-faced, tough-looking man unlocked and opened the door. Oh, it's you, boss. Come on in. Well, Leon, things are about ready for the big killing. I don't get all this, boss. Why are you so nice to that young guy, Freeman? He has a reputation for honesty, Leon. He will find the gold in that salted mine and he'll sell stock to all his friends. Then we leave him to explain while we take off with the cash. Now, come on. We'll go to the cafe and be there when he comes in with the news of finding the gold. Yes, the crooked deal seems like an easy one. Unless someone becomes suspicious and the crooks have to resort to murder. If Sergeant Preston and King become involved, they may face death in the attempt to solve this unusual case. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until tomorrow. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.